Someone recently mentioned they'd bought one of these Poundland LED camping lanterns and they were really impressed at how long the batteries seemed to last. You know, they put a set of batteries in it seemed to run for a real long time and without really losing intensity. And that's down to the characteristics of LEDs. I mean, this is a nice enough little light. I'm guessing that the LEDs are all in parallel inside with a common resistor. And it's got this uh, pop-up top that then reveals a switch. And if you pop the top off, it's got a reflective sort of label inside it to bounce some light out sideways. But you could also then use it just as a up light or a wall light. You know, it's a very useful thing. I've also seen these hacked for use by the paranormal investigators who have fitted them with infrared LEDs to make really high power infrared lights. And uh, these use a arrangement of four AA cells. And Firstly, it's using the AA cells, which have a good high capacity. It's a good, nice choice. Because uh, a AA has about three times capacity energy density of a AAA. In this case, I'm using rechargeable cells, which is even better, because by using four, it's done two things. It's made meant that they just need a couple of metal contact plates at the back to, to complete the series parallel, uh, should I say, the series circuit of the cells. And it also means that uh, by using four uh, cells... The nickel-metal hydride cells, even when they drop down to the lower voltage of about 1.2 volt that most of their discharge cycle is done at, it still puts out a nice high voltage that's going to easily power these LEDs at the full intensity for the entire discharge cycle. So let's see uh, how this comes apart. Let's take this apart completely, in fact. So out come the cells. In this case, uh, it's the, I, I recently covered this in another video, the cells I'm using are the old school pound world cells before they reduced the capacity by 50%. Hmm, 50% off. What a bargain. Not really. Uh, so let's uh, take some screws out the bottom of this one and take it apart and see what's inside. So I'm guessing that it is a circuit board with the LEDs in it and that one resistor, which will probably get quite hot but it'll only really be dissipating full capacity if you were to use alkaline cells or fresh nickel metal hydride at the full 1.5 volts and the, the battery pack was putting out the maximum of 6 volts then that's when that resistor would be doing overtime and the LEDs will almost certainly be, be driven quite hard so that's popped off this comes off now um, can I get more out of this? Does this pop right out the top? Let's uh, try levering the front the reflector off. I'm not sure how this comes to bits. We're about to find out. Yeah, this pops out. Revealing that this, uh, it wouldn't have come out any further anyway. There's the resistor, it's pretty small. Um, let's see what value that resistor is. The lighting here is terrible. I think it's gonna be something like one ohm. Might be 10 ohms. Uh, let's get a suitable meter. Let's get a cheapy meter. Let's fly the flag for cheap meters, said Clive, changing position abruptly and making a gasping noise as he did so, because, uh, yes, it's just where I am at the moment. There's not a lot of comfortable arrangements for working here. So let's uh, get the meter onto here. And the resistor value is, and uh, that's saying 19 ohms. That seems quite high. That's higher than I was expecting, but having said that, keep in mind that there is, let's see what the lead resistance is. Yeah, so that is, I would say that looks like brown, gray, black then, 18 ohms. That's quite high. Uh, let's, let's find, let's put the batteries back in and measure the voltage across that and calculate it's dissipation. So let's uh, set this. We're going to get about, well, yeah, let's put the batteries back in. Oh, now I'm regretting taking the, the base off. This has not been planned. Nothing gets planned. So let's uh, put the batteries back in. It's got an interesting arrangement. It holds the battery. Uh, there's a void here. I didn't realize that. There's a void. And then the batteries are supported at both ends. That makes sense of the way they went in, because it was a bit, I found it a bit footry to get the batteries in initially, but they're in now. And for those wondering what footry means, it's a Scottish word which means fiddly, a small, complicated task. So let's turn this on now and see if I can get smoke out of this. 
so we'll see what voltage we get across that resistor. The voltage is about 2 volts. So let's work, so it's 2.2 volts, we'll actually do the full calculation. So, do I have a notepad handy? No, I don't have a notepad handy. So, 2.2 volts uh, divided by uh, I equals V over R. So it's going to be 2.2 volts divided by the 18 ohms equals about 122 milliamps divided by the number of LEDs there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 equals you know that's about 11 milliamps per LED that is very, very acceptable now what's the dissipation then? Uh, the that was about 122 milli milliamps times the 2.2 volts equals, and you know, it's close to the rating of the resistor. Wow. That's ticking every box. Bloody hell. That's all right. I'm liking this. So the circuit board also, you know, it's worth buying this for the circuit board because it's a nice little round array of parallel LEDs. This must be why they convert it to the infrared ones. Because that's going to put out a good whack of infrared light. So if you take out the middle screw in this reflector, you end up with this nice little round circuit board here with the parallel array of LEDs. That's quite nice. So, um, now, the reason the batteries last so long is that uh, apart from the fact it's running at a modest current, it's running at a quite acceptable current for a long life, as the voltage goes down slightly, the, because of the way LEDs work, the, when it reaches the forward voltage in particular, as the voltage of the battery falls, the current also falls, and it happens so slowly that it's imperceivable. All you see is that crisp white light that LEDs are very good at putting out. And even when the batteries are right down to the point of just, even the case of, say, these nickel metal hydride cells, they reached the, the bottom of the, the end of the charge, and the voltage started, started tailing off. What would happen is instead of just going out, like the old tungsten lamps would have just gone really orangey and dull, these LEDs put out a lot less light, but they put out that crisp, useful white light. So even if these batteries were completely on the, you know, almost flat completely, uh, this would still make a good reading light, particularly if you pop the end cap off and just used it as an aimed light. So uh, this actually gets top marks. This is actually a really nice little light. I do like that.